This is a wonderful way to spend a spring day. We're in the centre of Paris and they've closed off a street. I'm at the start of a demonstration, a real Parisian style demonstration. There's a unicyclist, there are a lot of people with various flags, with various causes and there's a huge amount of excitement and enjoyment and everyone is waiting above all for one person to turn up. His name is Jose Beauvais. He's the man who sprang to attention in this country in 1999 when at a demonstration pretty much like this one in a city in the south of France he decided to lead the marchers on a local branch of McDonald's. They trashed the building site where the McDonald's was being built. It made his career in these circles and it has of course made him a great leader of the anti-globalization and the anti-American cause. Well, Mr. Bobet has arrived, but it's really impossible to get, literally impossible to get close to him at the moment. He is surrounded by people. He is a real rock star, if that's not too American a term to use. Mr. Bobet from the BBC, tell me, what do you believe? What, what do you want for France? Well, I think that France needs now, it's a real change. We need to change completely how politics is going on in this country. What about your relationship with the United States? I have no problem with the people from the United States. I have a problem, of course, with the administration of Mr. Bush. What do you think? You tell me that you like individual Americans. What about the nation? Do you think, on balance, America is a good thing for the world or a bad thing? Well, I think that what happened since Bush is there, it's more war. When they talk about liberty, the only answer they give us concretely is war. Uh, all over the world, it's uh, increasing uh, the fear of the people. And now when you talk about America everywhere in the world, people are afraid. I've been fighting very strongly against uh, the war in Iraq. I've been fighting also against what uh, Bush administration is doing inside of WTO against the uh, developing countries. United States have to be now, has to change its policy, has to say very clearly, we are going to stop dumping on the developing countries, and this is not fair. So we say we need fair trade, not free trade. Do you think French people like America? When I could be going there, I was very happy to go there, and it was a very big pleasure when we were in Seattle in 99 to be with the American people fighting in the streets against globalization. José Bové is a candidate in this month's French presidential election. He's not going to win, of course, but he does represent an important constituency. He's an odd sight, mustachioed and thick-set, the classic French farmer look, and yet surrounded here by the modern European protest set hoodies, the crusties, the campaigners against this, that and the other, all adoring him and his opposition to globalization. This is a constituency which has taken on an anti-Americanism born on the right amongst people these protesters would regard as sworn enemies, taken on and adapted while paying scant attention, of course, to the excesses of French globalization. Only this year, a French water company was chucked out of Bolivia for overcharging the locals, but they don't shout about that here on the streets of Paris. Not on the streets, and not either in the more salubrious corners of town, where sartorial standards are different, but attitudes towards America remain strikingly similar. From the streets of Paris, we've crossed now to one of its most elegant salons overlooking the River Seine, surrounded by fine art and attentive staff. Here is Hubert Vedrin, the former French foreign minister and architect of a grand strategy to clip the wings of the American eagle. When I say the words United States of America to you, what does it conjure up? What do you think of? Beaucoup de choses en même temps. Many things at the same time. For the French, the US is a big country, the main power in the world. And I even invented this word, hyperpower, which isn't a critical word, but an analytical one. It's not an attack, it's not a criticism. It means it's the biggest power we've ever seen in history, or at least in contemporary times. So a very important power with which we are allied, with which we are friends for historical reasons, and in reality, contrary to what's said, 
there's a sense of friendship in French public opinion towards the American people. But at the same time, we don't want to be aligned with the US. We want to keep our independent way of thinking, our autonomy, our autonomy of action. So in certain cases, that means we don't agree with the US, and we'd like to be able to express our disagreement when necessary without it becoming a tragedy each time. Je crois que... I think the American people think they're exceptional, they're different, with an exceptional destiny, a manifest destiny, not like the others. To a certain extent it's true, it's a unique country, so they have this universalist pretension, this messianic pretension, the sense that Providence has chosen this American people to lead the world, to enlighten it. For a long time, in the 18th and 19th century, it was rhetoric, but since at least 1945, it was no longer rhetoric, it was a reality. The American people believe they have this special role to play. And because of that, the American people believe they can forget all the lessons of history, the real politique, the psychology of other nations. In addition, there are people with a mission. They believe they have a particular mission to convert the whole world to democracy, to human rights, to the market economy. So it's a colonizing people, like the British and the French, but as a result of history, the British and the French have learned it doesn't work. They learned it was very complicated. They became more reflective. The United States believes in its message. That's the big difference with Europeans. Europeans today no longer know what they believe. They're gnawed by a sense of doubt. The Americans believe in themselves. But the world is more complicated than that. The world is very complicated and it doesn't work. Away from politics, at the level of McDonald's and Hollywood and free trade, at that level, how is it possible for nations like France, but other nations as well, to push back against the United States? Is it possible? No, ce n'est pas possible directement. No, it's not possible directly. We can't imagine a system against the United States. Within globalization, we need a set of rules which contain American power at the social level, the environmental level. That will become the real threat. It'll even become a geopolitical tragedy if we don't do anything. So my first reply is more rules within the international system and the multilateral system, which apply even to the US, it's not against them, not against the United States, but a general containment strategy. It's not against them, it's not against the United States, but it's a general containment strategy. Hyper puissance is a wonderful word, isn't it? And in America's least diplomatic former ambassador, John Bolton, lately of the UN, the word is made flesh. Mr. Bolton has a very definite view of America's place in the world and the willingness to express that view clearly. Our legitimacy comes from ourselves. The United States was founded on the proposition that the only real form of legitimacy in the world is the consent of the governed. And we were the first to believe that. Others believe it now too, but we don't require external validation of our legitimacy. I think there is a uh, historical tendency to look down on the United States in some quarters in Europe, combined with the tendency to reject the number one power in the world. When Europeans say, as some very prominent ones do, our role is going to be to hem in the United States, to make sure that it isn't able to use its power nakedly around the world, that we need this counterbalance, this counterweight. What is your approach to that? Good luck. <laughs> Will they succeed? No, they won't, because Europe doesn't have the capability to be a counterweight. What Europe should be doing is helping the United States to create the kind of international order where political freedom and open markets are possible. If Europe uh, spends its time distinguishing itself from the United States, it will weaken the collective power of uh, uh, pro-democratic, pro-market countries around the world. And I know there are plenty of people in Europe who spend a lot of time doing that. I've seen them in action. They're entitled to that point of view, but I think it's ultimately harmful to those interests we do have in common. What they say is that they have a historical perspective that allows them sometimes to correct the over-enthusiasms, if I can put it that way, of some people this side of the Atlantic. Uh, you remind to me why we declared our independence in the first place. <laughs>